let's get started. So in league, I like to talk first about the mental. Why do you think I want to talk about mental? Well, I think it's one of the most important things in like I keep your, your mind cold. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cool, cool. But how do we maintain having a good mental while we play league? No, we know it's important. But how do we have a good mental yeah. while playing? What do we do? Um, for me, I think is uh, to know how to do. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, maybe if you have a plan, uh, um, everything doesn't feel like uh, like everything is random, and you go with the current. I don't know. Okay. For me, I think, if you want to have a good mental over the course of playing multiple games, you should never type, don't type, and don't use chat. Like chat, my chat is always off. Okay. It's always off. Also, another point, I never blame anyone for mistakes, and I only focus on myself. Mm -hmm. I try to do this. It's hard, but if you adapt to it, 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 it's, it really is beneficial. Like, it's so good. If you just focus on yourself and try to improve like your gameplay. I want to improve mm -hmm. myself. I don't care what my team does. And another thing is the only consistent thing in your games is yourself. So if we look at your OP.GG here, the only thing that happens every game is you. This is you, this is you, this is you. Everybody else changes. It's only you mm -hmm. who's happening in every game. So if you get better, you will end up climbing, all right? So yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So don't type, don't blame. And if anyone spam pings you, mute them. You want to be at full focus while you're playing. And also, yeah, some people have ego when they play League. You know uh -huh. why they have ego? Um, I don't know. I think because uh, it's a competitive game and you want to be better than the enemy. Okay, let me let me rephrase the question, if you, if I may. Um, okay. When do people in real life have ego? Mm. It's part of being a human being. Yeah, but when does it happen? Mm. Like it, it it has a it has a foundation. Oh, when it happens, I think it's when when you feel threatened. Say it like again? uh you are yeah like uh when you feel that your value is is being more. It's in more. danger like us oh okay. yes okay 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 yeah you're right but also people they start having an ego when they think they finished learning like i have mm, nothing okay. else to learn i'm too good so they start having an ego but in, if you if you think about it, like, I'm here to learn. Okay, this game, I'm going to make mistakes so I can learn from my mistakes. So you're not going to have an ego because you know you're not perfect. People who think they're perfect, they have ego. Right. Okay. Cool. Could you give me one second, please? Sure, no problem. I can Are you back? Uh, I'm back. Okay, which one is your region? Uh, yeah, I was... Uh, that one, that one. Yeah, I was watching Jolly struggle a little bit. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna create an account later on. Anyways, um, now like we, we a little bit understood how the mental works and how we can have good mental while playing League. Now we go okay. to another concept and I, uh, in League, which is Windows. What do I mean by Windows or Opportunities? What do we mean by this? 
Um, it's like I, I see like a, this frame of time where you can do everywhere the enemy's abilities are in cooldown. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you can uh, yeah, do something. 100%, as you said. And it goes the opposite way as well. When you use your abilities mm -hmm. and cooldowns, you have no pressure in lane. So you played Janna, right? This is yes. you. you played Janna. Let's say I played here Caitlyn. Versus who? Versus Twitch and the Thresh. Okay? So mm -hmm. you throw your Q. Now we don't have a pressure in lane. So they have a mm -hmm. window to run us down, right? Or to yes. lane or to trade or to do anything. So understanding windows goes opposite ways. If you want to do something, like if a Thresh loses his Q or if you lose your Q. For example, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is like the basic understanding of Windows. Uh, to understand cooldowns, as you said. Anyways, so tethering this goes to AD carry, so it's, it doesn't matter that much when it comes to supports. Anyways, now with themes of bot lane. In bot lane, generally speaking, we have two types of bot lane. We have engage, and what starts with R. Mm. Range. Okay, so what are the things you need to be focusing on in engage lane and versus, or, or uh, okay, engage lane, what do you focus on? Let's say that now you're playing Leona, you quit Janna and now you play Leona, and you have a Samira. Okay. What should you be focusing on? Well, well I don't know the abilities of I mean the key. No, no, as well, you, what is the w, no, what no, generally, generally, like, what do you want to do in then? If this is any engaged support, by the way, it doesn't have to be Leona. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would focus, it, it depends on the level, but I would focus on how many minions are in the lane okay. first. Why? Uh, because if we are like a pretty low level, mm -hmm. uh, the minions can, can make a lot of damage. And it would be mm -hmm. really hard. It would be play even if I, yeah. Okay, okay. Here's another question. Um, do, do you know when you hit level two in bot lane? No. Oh, that's really important to mention, though. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, let me. How do I play this? Okay, I'm gonna look in my swear to show you. Because okay. it, it, in bot lane, it depends a lot on level 2. Usually people, they know, but since you don't, it's fine. We're gonna like just cover it really quick. Maybe I have some kills that I did at level 2. Do I? Maybe here. Let me see. I don't think I have anything here. Maybe here. Now this is a chaotic gameplay. This as well. Mm. I should start recording my entire game. Anyways, so where's this? Let's see. No, I don't think this is good. But let's see. Hopefully. Yeah, I don't think this one is good because it's uh, not normal lane as well. So I'm gonna like check this one. Because I want to show you like how many minions because you need to see so you know because I, I don't want to like tell you so you need to see it, I think. Because okay. uh, bot lane in like almost every rank, it depends on level two. Whoever gets level two first uh, can do so much, so many things. Okay, see, so look. Now we have these six minions, right? You with me? Mm hmm. Okay, cool. After killing these three, let's see how much XP I'm gonna have. I don't think this tells the XP, but yeah. Yeah. 
it's no problem. Okay, let me just control the camera better. Okay. So now, it's finally trading. I mean, ignore this part of trading. Let's focus on the wave. I didn't get level 2 yet. Let's see when I get level 2. Now, see? So, we have 6 minions in the first wave, plus 3 melee minions of the second wave. That's when you get level 2. Okay? And in bot lane, okay. level 2, people start doing a lot of things. So let's see here what I'm doing. So once I got level 2, I started walking up. And I started bullying them. That's what people do at level 2. Immediately, once you get level 2, you start doing stuff. Why? Because... At level 2, you have level advantage. And one level advantage is equal to 600 gold worth of stats. Right? What do I mean by this? You are going to get more HP, more AD, more attack speed, and more, I think, stats. Uh, maybe armor? Yeah, you get more armor and more medical resist. So basically, you get more stats, which are worth to 600 gold. Also, you get an extra ability. So let's look here. Now we have 750 HP, right? 74. Okay, let me, let me write this down. 750 HP. And 7480. And then 0.72 attack speed. And 26 armor. And this also goes to the support. Just I'm, I'm giving you an example because I'm the ADC here. So let's see. Now I'm going to level up. Look. I have 1833 HP. 7729074. So I... It's kinda, I went back and I bought items just by leveling up, leveling, leveling, leveling up. Do you, do you get it? Yes, I get it. 100%. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So when do you get level two? After killing the first wave and three minions of the next wave, the melee ones. You know the melees, right? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Um, I can show you like when you get level 3, but uh, level 2 matters the most. Wait, I deleted the entire screen here. Let me go back. Yeah. So, wait, no, I deleted it again. Okay, let's talk. Now, let's talk about engage lane. We are in some engage lane. Where, what do we focus on? There are two main things you should be focusing on when you have this lane, an engage lane. You want to control the wave. You want the wave to be in a spot where you can fight. Where do you think is good for you to fight when you have an engaged support? This is you, or you, you are a Leon or Nautilus or anything. Where do you think you should be fighting or having the wave? Maybe between the... Either in the middle and the... And okay, so... Between the middle and by my side. This is one. This is two. This is three. One. Two, okay. three. Where should the wave be? Uh, between two and three? No. Wait, which no, side are you? Okay. Red or blue? Uh, red. You're, okay, if you're red, you want the wave to be somewhere here, yeah. Not two, but most likely uh, three. Why? Let me show you this. Uh, uh, because if you have the wave here, and you start the fight, you're going to have a long path or a long range. Uh -huh to have the fight. You can run them down. And also, if you would miss your ability, it's less punishing. So you can back off quicker, okay? Okay. It doesn't make sense? Yes, it okay, makes cool. sense. So let me show you now a little bit. Um, so I think not this one, yeah. So look here. I have a Thresh and I have the Twitch. So I wanted the wave to be here in this area. Why? Because they have to walk up and he can just hook, right? So since I'm mm -hmm. I'm controlling the wave to be here, and now we can kill this Janna easily. I know it's sad for you to see Janna die, but it's fine. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> okay. Let's continue now. Now we like understood a little bit about engage, right? Mm -hmm. We need to control the wave. Also, when you play engage, make sure you don't lose HP. Don't lose HP as much as you can. Why? Why do you think you don't want to lose HP? Mm, I don't know. 
Like, throw a guess, anything. You don't have to know. We're here to ah. learn. Why do you know? I don't. Why do you know? Uh, oh, maybe because you have to sh kind of like a change a little bit. So you have to have a little bit of, it, of HP to, to. I don't know. Yeah, because if you engage with low HP, you're going to die before you try to do your stuff. Right? So it's really hard for a Leona when she's 50% HP to engage on enemy comp, right? Okay. All right. So that's why you need to have good HP and also good wave position. Anyways, now with range, now you have a range lane. What's the, and by the way, engage could also apply to Janna in case you don't know, because Janna, she can lock up, right? So if you put the wave here, mm -hmm. you can lock up enemy and then you can fight all the way. So it depends on how you want to play the champion. Some champions can be played as engaged, even though they're range and vice versa. So it goes all, all around. I'm just giving you a general idea of how you want to play. Then the play style goes, okay. goes back to you. Now you have a range lane. Give me an example of a range lane, like double range. Um, maybe some book champs, like uh, mm -hmm. brand. Okay, brand with what? With any ADC, um, let's assume Caitlyn because she's yeah. she's a lane bully. Brand with Caitlyn, what should what do they want to do in lane? Poke, poke. as much as they can. How do they poke? Mm, good abilities. Yeah, but they want to first push the wave. Why? Because when you push, uh, you do so many things. First, you put your opponent in a narrow spot. First, they play in this lane, it's big, right? They can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then you put them here, for example, in this range. Cool? That's the yeah. first thing you do. You push. So you have, like, you make the space smaller for them. Number two is you clear the minions so you have open air. Open air. What do I mean by this? There are no minions that can block your abilities, and there are no minions they can stand behind. So you clear the minions, you can put them under here. So you want to push as much as you can. What else should you be focusing on? Um. Uh, maybe in the jungle, in the opponent jungle. Mm hmm. Say again. Yeah. In the open jungle or in the garden because you are pushing? You're definitely correct. You want vision. Since you are pushing, you need to keep reminding yourself. Because this is something people always forget when they push. They kind of tunnel vision on pushing and minions, so they forget to put words. So if you are going to push, you want to put vision, right? So keep reminding yourself of these things. You want to always push, and you want to always put vision. But also, sometimes, you play Brand Caitlyn, okay? Or let's say Janna Caitlyn, it's a famous mm -hmm. lane. And you want to push, you want to put your opponent under turret, so you can take turret, movement lane and stuff. And then, enemy jungler spam ganks you, so the strategy changes. There isn't a, a rule or one th big thing you can follow, because everything change according to how your opponent plays the game. Does it make sense? yeah cool so here this is like a general thing but you know there are exceptions always anyways let's see so we're done with themes of bot lane do you have any questions so far no okay cool no questions cool, cool cool now we have to understand something called weak side and strong side what do we what do we mean by this Um, you mean uh, uh, the map sides? No. Side? No, not the map. No? It's the back no, or, or the champions? The backup. The backup. Yeah. Okay. Like, do you have a backup or no? Let's say that enemy team, enemy jungle is playing around here. And your okay. team is playing around here. That means you are being weak-sided. And if anything happens... Um. If anything happens in lane here, let's say that you traded, 
and everyone in this lane is 50% HP. Who is gonna benefit from this? Red side or blue side? Uh, red side? Why? Because the jungler is here. Mm -hmm. Since the jungler is here, they can kill them since it's 50 HP. So when you're weak sided, let's say that the blue side, when you're weak sided, you don't want to trade. No trading. It's bad. You just want to at you want to survive and give them what they want. If they want to take the turret, let them take the turret. You, your job is just to survive. It turns it into a survival game. Does it make sense? Wow. <laughs> it, it changed like everything. Everything. Okay. Okay. Everything is good, right? Right? Okay. So yeah. So in some cases, let's see for example. Um, I think I had a Twitch game recently. What is it? I think it was, uh, was it this one? This one? This one, where is it? Yeah, it's this one. So look, here I had a bard, a bard and Evelyn, and I was weak sided. Look, it's 14 minutes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Like, even my CS is bad. And I was like weak sided. I was playing, like, and look, my uh, level, I'm level 9, Vayne level 8. I was playing 1v2 entire lane. So here, I made a mistake. I went to hit Vayne instead of just respecting. Here, I should let them take the turret. But I egoed it, and I was like, nah. Okay. So I made a mistake here, and I lost my flash, my ghost, my ult, and I also died, and they, get, they took the turret. So you see the, like, the losses. I could have lived, uh -huh. and I got the XP and the next wave without dying. Here, I entered my team, and this is my fault. Right? So, this is like, yeah. I did not, like, respect the weak side. And also, like, when it's a weak, strong side, you want to punish your opponent. Let's assume. Let's give some examples. Let's say that you're playing something like Alistar. Alistar with, uh, who? Draven. Versus Ash. Ash with Bard. Bard rooms. What does this mean? You're in 1v2. That means you're strong sided, kinda. Because you have you have backup, right? You agree? Yeah. So now, yeah, okay. since you are Alistar Draven versus Ash alone, so you have to punish her. You have to dive or maybe freeze. So she can't farm. You have to deny her something. You cannot. Okay, it's bad to give your opponent the wave for free if you can kill your opponent. Because it doesn't make any sense. If you give Ash the waves for free, while Bard is doing stuff on the map, and she farms and you farm, like she's gonna get ahead, why? Because Bard is like outnumbering your team, it's 4v3 here, while Ash is equal and also ahead, why? Because she gets solo XP. It's solo XP. You see the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So you should punish when you're strong sided. And for example, let's say your jungler is here, you want to trade as much as you can when you are strong sided. Anyway, any questions about strong side, weak side? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. I, I, I didn't even think about it. Good, good. But by the way, League is all about logic and the game is all about steps. It's literally just mm -hmm. a big chess. A chess game that 10 people play, literally. Every step has an answer and has a next step towards it. Even if, if players, they don't know, but at the back of their heads, it the, this is the process. I will move up, so he moves down, so I can throw a ho hook here, for example. So you see, it's all about like the next step, how to predict, how to understand. All right, now we finished laning phase. We pushed, we took turret, and what do we do now? Laning phase usually end after taking the turret. Um, usually go to me, mm -hmm. or maybe look if the dragon is up. Uh, for me, I usually tend to go to put some words up in their jungle. Okay. Okay, let me ask you this question. When do you ward as a support? 
Where, where, what, excuse me? When do you put words? Mm, it's what? a good question. Um, in face, uh, imagine that we are in the blue side. Mm -hmm. If we are in the face lane, maybe around, around there where you're. I, I didn't ask where. I said, I said when, because you probably know where. Ah, to, when? Yeah, when. Ah, uh, when. If I have an available word, I would put it. Yeah, I think you should word after pushing the wave. You should first help your ADC push the wave, and then you move with your ADC to remove vision and put vision. Because let's say that they are pushing you, right? And mm -hmm. you word here, for example, or here, they're gonna clear it because they have push. You are now, your yeah. ADC is under turret, right? He has to clear up the wave. So what's the point of wording here and here? If you are under turret, you need to push the wave first, then clear up and, you know, it's a, it's a wave pushing game. You push the wave and you take actions. Let me show you like a really quick note. Where is it? So where is it? I think it's down. I always lose this. Yeah, let's look here. Here we can see like there are so many things, but, but the prior means pushing wave. You can roam no. after pushing. You can recall after pushing. You can dive, you can invade, you can put vision, you can you know, stay in bush the way they come for you and then you kill them. You can st stay for next wave it's, and stuff. So anything you want to do, any action, if you want to roam mid lane, it's fine. Just help your ADC push the wave, then go mid lane. And while you're in mid lane, you want to look at the wave. If the wave comes and they want to dive your support, your ADC, you go back. So coordinate your gameplay around waves. And you will get so much better at the game just by doing this singular thing. All right. Okay. Now let's understand something else. So first, wait, wait. First we said like coordinate your kills and your, yeah, your kills around what, around waves. And now you also need to coordinate your actions. Like the stuff you do on the map, you want to coordinate it around waves. Like I will do this after pushing. I will move there after pushing. I will do that after pushing. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And you as a support, you should be hitting the wave more often. I see so many support, they don't touch the minions. Even though like, let's say, I, you have a Draven in your Janna, and you, you know now when you get level two, right? So if you help the Draven get level two really quick, what's gonna happen? You can heal the enemy ADC and Draven kill, just because you hit the minions with your autos. So it's not like only poking. But... Go on. Uh, I have a concern because Sometimes when I help, well, I help my ADC with the CC, mm -hmm. I feel like they miss more minions. So I don't know if I do it right uh, or wrong. So I okay. don't touch them. I try not to touch the minions when they're low HP. Hit them when they're full HP, okay. like when they're full, until let's say 40%. Then stop. I would say this. But yeah, okay. I try to, like, when your ADC wants to push, wants to get level up or anything, be aware of the things you can do. Don't just stand, you know, as a shielding machine. You can do a lot of things. And Janna has so much, like, damage in her auto attacks. She can do a lot. Now let's talk about the bushes in bot lane. Because bot lane is, a l is too much about bushes. Okay, which side do you, do you want to be for this example? Let's say blue. Okay, your blue side. What happens when you sit in this bush? Excuse me, what did you say? What happens when you sit in this bush? Like you're now here. What happens? Okay. Mm. Well, uh, I, I have like a control of that space. Not only that space, you control 70 or 75% of the lane. You control this entire part. Like this entire thing is for you. And when you control this bush, when you sit here, you control the entire lane. So um. controlling bushes in bot lane is really important. Okay. Let's assume now. Let's, I'm, I'm just giving you examples so you understand more. Um, you are being pushed at. Let me, I can show you a video. Okay. 
So I sometimes just stream on Twitch. You can, you know, a little bit like, I, I stream coaching, okay. I stream uh, like simple stuff. We're just new at the thing. So here, for example, uh, let me show you. Okay. Um, where is it? Yeah. Okay, here we call, right? Wait. Yeah, I think now. What is it? Why am I losing it? Yeah. So what happens after you push the wave? What's the natural thing to happen after you push the wave? Uh, um, go to base? No, no, but yeah, but what happens to the wave? It pushes oh. back onto you. Yeah. So that's the normal thing that happens in League. Whenever you push a wave, and let's say you leave the lane, the wave is going to end up pushing back. They call it the bounce back. Oh, it towards you. Okay. So here, for example, mm -hmm. the, uh, this, uh, this guy, I co was coaching him. And he is recalling now. I told him he could do something. He could, while he's recalling, ward this bush. Why? Because when you shove the wave, it's going to bounce back. And if it's bounces back, you're going to take it when it's here, right? Yeah. And when you are here, like being pushed at in that space, you will need this bush to be warded. Why? Because enemy Amumu could be here. Enemy Graves could be here. And whenever like you take Mrs. Step, they will jump on you and eat you as an ADC. So this, okay, this something is general. You can do it as a support or an ADC. So while you're recalling or, you know, after pushing a wave, you could put a word here. Or when you're on the opposite side, you could put a word here. It's good on the bounce back. Okay. One more thing to focus on. Whenever you're being pushed at, like you're being under threat, you want the first burst mm -hmm. to be warded. Just for the same exact reason. This bush, whenever you're That's under, true. you're here, this has to be warded. Because let's say that you're playing against Ringar or Talia or any jungler like Fiddle. They can just, whenever like you mess a step, let's say you, go, you, go to, you get here, they can kill you. Like Talia can double you and you're dead. So this bush is a must ward. Cool? Mm -hmm. So bot lane is a lot about bushes. All right. So let me just ask a random question. When do you roam as a support? Um, do you roam a lot? The lane is, is going really bad and I know that the ADC won't die. Mm -hmm. Or when for some reason we recall in a different time, mm -hmm. let's say like a uh, my ADC stays and I recall and then when I arrive they recall and I stay so I I tend to run to mid lane. Okay. The or idea... maybe to or maybe put if the mid lane isn't there so maybe just put some wars in the river or something like that. Good, good, really good, really good. Okay. So you t you roam sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see here now. My idea of roaming, you as a support, you should roam. Roaming is good, but when do you do it? As we said earlier, you have to push the wave, then look for stuff. That's like the general idea if you want to have it. But if we want to go into more specifics, it's better if your ADC, now like it goes back to ADC, he controls the lane more, but if he builds a wave, like he stacks a wave, and then he shoves it, and then, you know, we recall, and you can roam. But also when you're roaming, as I said, you want to take a look at the wave. Because you don't want your ADC to die on next waves. And also, that this is a side note, every 30 seconds, a wave spawn. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have a time when the, the wave is cleared, you have some time until the wave, next wave comes. If you clear this one like really quick once it arrives, Next one is gonna come over 30 seconds, and now you can like you can have time to go mid maybe and go back while your ADC is safe. Okay. One more thing to mention about this: uh, what do you do after recalling? Now you basically like you pushed the wave, nothing happening. You didn't roam. You recalled. Now what do you do? Like, uh, yeah, what, what place I I yeah, go? Where do, you, where do you go? What do you do? 
Um, usually bot lane. No. You yeah. want to always pass med, then go bot lane. Pass med, you, you know what? If you can, like, help this guy push it, then recall, good. If this guy is, like, I don't know, mad or something, just ignore it. Uh, if you can put wards, like, maybe here. If, okay, here's the thing. Even in mid lane, you want to ward after pushing. So if you can help this guy push, you put the ward, then go bot lane. Why? Because the mid lane minions, they meet each other, like, quicker than the other lanes. Because this one is longer. Look how long it is. Well, how short this is. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can finish pushing here, and you can go bot and catch, like, most of the wave, like, XP-wise. So always as a support, after your first, second base, you want to go mid, at least you do something called hovering. So you can sit, let's say, here or somewhere, like, you know, or here, for example. If something happens, you join. If nothing happens, you just go back bot. Or you put a word while you're going back bot. It's really good to hover. You hover. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Cool. Now, we are in mid-game. We finished all of this. Like we took that, right? we, we roamed, we did our stuff. Normally you want to be mid lane, but when do you not want to be mid? When no go mid. No go mid. There are like some cases. Um, I don't know. I mean, I always go mid lane. <laughs> Maybe if if the uh, mid, mid laner is is to maybe if we have an advantage and the mid lane doesn't have any advantage? No, that's when you want to go mid. Okay, when you're winning bot lane, oh. you want to go mid lane. It's also good. But okay. it goes the opposite way. If you if you wait, if you guys um, are, if you guys are losing bot, you're losing, and the mid is winning, the mid laner. You don't you don't want to go mid. You wanna you don't wanna swap. It's not good. Right? And looks like it's like uh, you know, it's better for the mid lane to snowball the game. If that makes sense. And what else, uh, when else do you, sh you should go mid lane? It's when you can't play the matchup. Let's say you can't play the matchup. The matchup. Let's say, for example, your ADC can't play versus the enemy Azir. He's uh, 3 and 0. It's impossible to deal with him. So you don't want to go mid lane, maybe go top. But as a support, there is a problem. Okay, let's talk about this. Why do people go mid lane in the first place? It's not for the ADC. I mean, it's partially for the ADC, but it's mainly for you, for the support. Why? Because being in mid lane opens them up. Look here in bot lane. You as an ADC, you play in a you play in a locked, I mean, not as an ADC, as a bot lane, you play locked, right? But when mm -hmm. you both go mid lane, you can impact the entire map. So you can, as a Janna, you push the wave, then you go top. You can go mid, you can invade, you can go hero, you can go dragon. But in bot lane, you cannot do so much because you are locked. You are away from the entire map, if that makes sense. So yeah. ideally, now we are in mid lane. Let us solve this. We, you are in mid lane. What, what, what should be the job? It's just like bot lane, but on a bigger scale. You want to push the wave and then hover. You want to hover a place. You want to put vision you want, with your ADC. You, you help the ADC pushes the wave. And then you can ask your team to move with you so you can put wards. You don't put wards unless you push the wave first. It's hard, sorry, it's hard for you to push the wave without, uh, sorry, it's hard for you to put Vigen without pushing the wave, as we explained earlier. So yeah, you push, you remove Vigen, you put Vigen, you hover, place a top lane, mid lane, and so on. So it's all about pushing, hovering, pushing, hovering. You push so you can hover. Does it make sense? Yeah. 100%. You, you don't have any questions? No. Okay, cool. Let's now assume that there is a Camille here, or a Fiora. Our Fiora is here. What are our responsibilities towards this Fiora? Could you repeat? What should we do when we see our Fiora pushing top lane or bot lane? Word, word for her? Okay, that's number one. What else? Um, push another lane. Okay, pressure on another lane. Pressure. What else? Mm -hmm, pressure. Mm. No idea. Okay, cool. You could hover. You could go and hover the Fiora. Mm. You could do. You could mm. threaten. Like you could tell your team, guys, 
Since the Fiora is top, we go Dragon. They either go to Fiora or they come to Dragon. If they come to Dragon, they lose top lane. If they, lo if they go to top lane, they lose Dragon. You give your opponent hard decision. Threaten. Let's assume that you're here, you want to recall, okay? You want to recall, and if Fiora is there, at least you want to walk somewhere close and recall here. So if anything happens, you can follow. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. You don't want to lose the pressure here. You don't want your Fiora to die. You should like try to provide as much backup as you can. All right. Um, where is the notes? Yeah. Okay. In team fights, what should support do? Uh, war, the surroundings. Ward. What else? Uh, make sure that the carrier doesn't die. Okay. Kill. Okay. Kill. Okay. Mm. Okay, here's the thing. That's it? Okay, here's the thing. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. Hey, let's look for example. Now we are red side, for example. And, you know, we will, team fights usually happen on objectives. I mean, yeah, I know in like, in solo queue, it's different, but yeah. Let's talk about like the, the, mm -hmm. the normal things. Okay, now you wanna push mid lane, for example. Then you move to the jungle. You put vision here, here. This is the old map, by the way. You put vision here. Now you use your words. What should you do? You recall. You get your words back again. Why? Because you want to be careful if any any flank happens. You after you know after these words they pass by them. You want to word again, for anything could happen from the back. A flank, a TP. I don't know any marine thing just f does something crazy on you and so on. So you first word for the attack and then you work for the flank and also as you said as a support you want to peel your ADC sorry and I have a, like a, a fly in my room and it's annoying me mm. I don't know if the mic can catch her sounds but yeah it's annoying so yeah no I don't hear anything yeah. thank god okay so you either want to engage or peel you either want to engage or peel it depends and you also want to provide as much information and like security to your team. And this goes back to your items. For example, you want to like get Mikael if needed or Redemption or, you know, these things. I think you already know them. Mm -hmm. What else like should the support do? Okay. This is like an interesting thing. I, I made a video about it like way before. I make, you know, I used to, I used to make like some YouTube shorts. Okay, I think where is it? Um, okay. What is your channel? Um, I can sh I can share. I'll show you later on. Here is a quick tip to improve your support game. The giga, let me just uh, the giga. I spoke in Arabic by mistake. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's look here. So, like, th this is like uh, some tips to improve your support gameplay. That's like the, the, the title of it. So there are the things you can block for your ADC. Let's look at the brom here. Okay. Wait. It skips. Anyway, so Brom blocks uh, the Kaiser W. Let's see here what the Ash is gonna do. Look. Ash flashed to block his real Q. You can use your HP to do that. Look, look at Brom. I mean, Nautilus. He's blocking Brom Q. And here at the start is blocking Nautilus Q. These are some things you can do to save your ADC. And here, he's blocking, look, the Graves auto attacks. You can also block them. And you can also do this. This is like really cringe when support do it. See, the W is aiming at the minion, right? Mm -hmm. Alistar walks yeah. here to block the W of Kaisa so she can don't get the minion. You get it, right? Do you get it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that, I think that's one of the more difficult things for me to do. Yeah, you can just walk, like a shield yourself, yourself. And uh, block the W or anything. Okay. What was I saying? Um, yeah. So what what else could you do in team fight? What do you think? 
I think you should focus on, you should have a list of your targets. For example, you should have a list of the things you want to use your abilities on. Let's say that you're a Lulu, okay? okay? You're Lulu now. I want to use my W on the enemy assassin, enemy Katrina. You should have a list of this, okay? I want to use my Nukub, um. my Nukub, when Rengar comes. You have a list on the things you want to do when you play in chatters. Okay, I'm gonna... Can you hear me? Your voice is, I mean, I think my internet yeah. is bad. Okay, okay. Okay. Cool. And when you play Janna, okay, I'm gonna use my ult when Ringar jumps so I can cancel his ultimate. You can do these yeah. things. Okay, my Q when Zach comes. So you have this list of things you can do, like whenever something happens, you're ready for it. Okay, League of Legends is all about predicting what your opponent is going to do next. It's not about reacting to what your opponent is doing. It's about knowing what's going to happen before it happens. So you are ready for it. Okay. There is another okay. short I made as well. Let me show you. It's about um, the power of, what do you call it? The, uh, the pressure of your abilities. If we can see here, where is it? Where is it? I keep losing stuff. Yeah, maybe this one. Is it this one? Oh, I think we just watched this one, right? Yeah, we just watched it. Not this one then. Not this one. Not this one. Yeah, not this one either. Sometimes ADCs must. Okay. Sorry, I'm wasting time. I, I find a point. Okay. Let's look here, okay? You see? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, here, for example, Thresh walked in. Thresh walked in. He missed his stuff. This is about like the first thing we talked about. It's the uh, windows, okay? Thresh misses his EQ, mm -hmm. walks in, goes E. Now enemy bot lane, they know there is nothing to like punish them. So they literally, they run down. Look, they're running down in like their opponents. Mm -hmm. And double kill. Perfect. Right. But let's look here. Rakan, look at how he's gonna play it. Uh, okay. Look at how Rakan is playing it. What do you say? We're going to moment, please. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay, no problem. So let, let's focus okay. on how Rakan is going to play. So okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, look. Okay. See, he's not using his W because what? If he Ws, Pike is going to escape. And now look, he didn't use his W yet. He's waiting. Once Fiddle used his, like this absorbing ability, Rakan goes with the W to cancel it. So there is a there is a pressure when you don't use your skill shots or abilities, right? Right. Cool. So this also applies to any champion. Like when you play Janna, people will be like dodging your, um your Q, and then you can just kill them. Okay, let me see. I think I was playing something. Let me try to find a play I made today. What was I playing? Mm. I was playing against Smolder. Yeah, I think it was here. Was it here? Yeah, okay. Okay, look. So here I'm playing Varus, okay? Mm -hmm. See, look at the smaller. He's dodging the ability, and I'm just, you know, I'm walking towards him. You could do this with any support. It's just to pressure the opponent. Just by walking. 
All right. My friend is gonna send a clip as well, so you can clean it more. Anyways, um, in team fights, Blade, can you like um, give a quick wrap up of what supports should do in team fights? By the way, this is my duo. He's my support. He can give us. Okay. Um, I never go luck until go luck. Okay. Oh, you can. Then type it in. I type it in chat. So I'm gonna read it. Okay. I'm scared. 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 I'm Okay. Yes, Soraka is a pillar too. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just chill. I mean, I play support to relax, honestly. Like when I and I play Senna as well. Okay, he's typing. You should. Oh, cover. Senna. Yeah, Senna is Senna is amazing. He's saying you should cover the ADC from the front line. Like you keep your abilities, the CC, till the enemy front line get close from ADC. As I told you, like you should have a list of who you are going to use your stuff on. For example, mm. you play against Misfortune, okay? And I think it, it, it comes a lot in gold. You're playing against Misfortune and you're Janna. Your job is, for example, you can use your EQ to cancel her ult. You wait until she uses ultimate and then you cancel to the EQ. That's something you could do. Do you agree? Yeah. Do you do it? I'm agree. Sometimes. Okay, so you should be like prepared for it. Okay, let's see what else is saying. He said, tell the enemy front line get close. Okay, he's saying, you keep your CC abilities, tell the enemy front line get close from your ADC. You have to do the setup sometimes. So you have to engage and stuff to make them all close from each other. Like Renata QR to make them all close from each other. That's what he's saying. Uh, what else? So we covered yeah. all of this so far. So you can agree on it. And you have to word in the mid, mid of team fight when there is a bush. Yeah, this is also really important. In bot lane and outside of the bot lane. When you have an ADC, and let's say that you have a fight, enemy ADC and support, they're running to the bush. Okay? What happens when they run to the bush? What do you think? Hello? Mm, I don't know. Okay. You lose vision. You, and when you lose vision, how do you get it back? You either enter the bush or you put the word. So this is a, like a muscle thing you should be doing. Whenever a fight is happening, in the middle of the fight, when they walk into a bush, you should, before they enter the bush, you word it. If that makes sense. And also in team fights, it's the same. Whenever yeah. You, yeah. Um, if I can find an example... To be cool, but I think it's obvious. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, always. I have a friend, so, so sometimes he always remind me to guard the bushes for you know, team fight or something. Yeah, look here, for example, I warded this bush before the fight. So if they enter the bush, look, now I can hit the swing because I have it warded. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I lost the fight anyway because my karma is hitting smaller instead of swing, but yeah, whatever. Okay, let's see here. So he sent some stuff. Let's see. Um, like Renata Q, you have word, yeah, sure, when there's a burst, it might be assassin there with your ADC to, uh, to take any waiting. Your... Ah, okay. So he's saying that you need to like word bushes as well. Let's say that you are moving, let's say here like this, and you know, you come here and there. You know, you should ward the bush before you enter it, because if your ADC take, takes any extended step, he's going to die. So you need to make sure that he's safe. All right, let's watch this. So he's Renata and I'm the witch. Look here. The damage. So look, he did not use his Q until now. He's waiting. She ulted, so he canceled the ult immediately. Did you see it? Look. Yeah, I see it. So yeah, this is the power of your pressure. Misfortune wow. did not ult. She was waiting for him to use a Q. It's just a mind game, basically. All right. Thank you, Blade. Okay. 
So now let's talk about advantages. What types of advantages do we have in League of Legends? Mm, advantages? Mm -hmm. What types of advantages do we have? Like uh, when CC advantages, level advantages. Okay, level, and we explain this, it's equal to 600 gold each level. Okay, what else? Item. Mm -hmm. Item. Champion. Like, this counters this, and what else? Number of champions. They are four, we are three. This is also an advantage. Okay. So whenever any skirmish happens, let's say like something happening in mid, okay? And you are here, like you are here. You look at the state of the game. Okay, it's a 3v2 to our favor, and we are level six, seven, six, and eight, for example, the top laners here. Okay, cool, and they're level six and seven. So we automatically, know that we're gonna win so whenever any skirmish happening you want to look at these things you look at items you look at champions you look at the number and you look at the level and then you make a decision whether you join them or you do another thing it's always important whenever a fight is happening you want to join the fight but sometimes the fight is already over your team had by the time you're here your team has already lost so it's just better to continue here. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Any, Any questions question? so far? No. All right. So now with the topic of how to end the game. What do you think? How do we end? Um, usually the game ends with a team, team fight mm -hmm. or with a baron or with a ancestral, ancestral dragon. Okay, that's also right, but in League, you should destroy turrets. Why? Oh, yeah. Why do we destroy turrets? Well, they they chill the ne the enemy nexus. Yes, but let's say like I could just destroy this and open the nexus. Why do we destroy this everything? Why is it important if we take this, for then this, 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 and there is only this turret? Why do I, why do I think we should also take this before we open the base for multiple reasons? But when you take a turret, uh, you need to take a turret, you're kind of taking over the area, the space. So if I take this, I'm opening the map until here. If I take, for example, like all of this, let's say I'm opening this, this part. If I take this, I'm opening into this part, like this. So I open this part by taking the turrets because there is nowhere they can escape, cool? So if I take this, 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 everything. What's happening is I opened my entire map. They can only play in their base when I take all the turrets on the map. And also there is another thing. Look, for example, if I take mid turret, what's happening is you're gonna open the map like this. So mid turret is the single most important turret in the game, this tower. He's, it's so broken, or it's so important. Okay. Why else do we take turrets? It gives gold, and there is one hidden thing as well. When you take a turret, it buffs the minion in this lane. So if I take three turrets here, the minions of this lane are gonna be stronger. So eventually they're gonna push more. So we can take the nexus. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So ideally, you want to destroy everything before you end the game. Like every turret. Then, for example, if you want to take Baron, which inhibitor do you want to take? The... Um, the bottom one. Why? The bot one. Why? Why this one? Because it, it takes them 
longer to clear and go to Baron. Yeah, yeah because it's, it's further away, away. right? Mid lane inhibitor does not give a lot, as much as the side ones. It's good, but these ones are better. Also, if you want to do Baron a Dragon, you want to go for this one. And it's just the same thing. Alright. Okay, now with the comebacks. How do we make a comeback? Comebacks in League are a real thing. It's really um, a, like, a normal thing to make a comeback in League. How do we make a comeback? Like you know, 20? How do we make a comeback? Yeah, how do we like, make a comeback? Maybe trying into just by numbers. Okay. Maybe if we, if someone is Oh, and number them until until we get like a strong enough to yeah, but it's, fight them. It's, it's really hard, hard to outnumber when they're taking the entire base. Let's say that like you're here only. Well, they took yeah. your base. So the idea is you have two options. Option number one, you give everything up. You give everything on the map. They want to do Baron, let them. They want to do Dragon, let them. They want to take Jungle Camps, let them. You just farm, I mean, as a team, in your base. You just farm in your base. That's like the, first, the, the, the thing you can do. Until you're strong enough, then you go for a fight. Number two is, you flip. They're coming like this, they want to end the game. You go Baron, you flip it. If they end the game on time, we lose. If they don't end, we take Baron, we recall, maybe we can make a, we can make a comeback. Or for example, you can send five people top, we destroy, destroy, destroy. They send one, we kill, they send two, we kill, and we end the game. So it's either by giving or you flip. That's how you make a comeback. You leak. Okay? Okay. Cool. All right. Now with the single most important thing of this session. Everything we talked about is in theory. In like, But in practice, league is too flexible and it changes a lot. For example, I told you like you want to ward after pushing. Sometimes you can't. You have to ward right now, and it's fine. But the best time to ward is after you push. Sometimes you want to roam after pushing, but sometimes you can't because, you know, it's better just to move now, looking at the expected value. So you look at the value that you're going to get if I roam now or if I roam five, minute, five seconds later. If I move now, we get 1k gold. If I move so half a second later, we get like nothing. So I'm gonna move now, even though I lose the wave. So things change. Anyways, so the last concept I wanna talk about is join the monkeys. <laughs> it's really important, it's really simple. A bad play alone, oh sorry, a bad play together is a good play. A good play alone is a bad play. So league is all about uniting and like playing as a team if we go baron and it's the right time but no one wants baron and i start it then they kill me then enemy takes baron it's gg we lost the game but if we go baron on the wrong time but we commit to it and we take it gg we win the game you see so I see. it all goes back to this anyways any questions so far no all right good, good. So we're gonna watch a little bit of high hero gameplay, then we're gonna stop. Uh, just a second. Naam. Okay, I'm back. So we're gonna watch a little bit of game, uh, high hero gameplay, and then since you play in another server, I need to make an account and stuff. So we can have another session later on, like maybe next week or something, after you apply these principles we talked about, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay, so what do I want to watch? What do you want to watch? Give me a champion and we're going to watch it. Yeah, let's go Jana. Okay. That is the champion I'm playing right now. Okay, no. But the Jana is one of the strongest supports right now. He's really, really strong. Okay. I want to watch something like, what is this? I want to watch a full game. I don't want to watch like this. Okay. Um, let's see. Alright, let's see rank one Jana. UNE, UNE, US. Second video is full game. Yeah, but I, I want something uh, not outdated. Yeah, look, it's outdated. Two months ago. I want something for this uh, period of time. 
Okay, okay. we're we gonna watch, watch this one. one. All right, so, so now you pick, pick the matchup, matchup we're gonna watch, okay? okay. Let's see. Here it's uh, Jana Varas versus Samira Mokai, but it's a remake. Uh, here it's uh, Jana Israel versus Varus Blitzcrank. Here it's uh, Jana Karma versus Kaisa Nautilus. Here it's a uh, Jana Samira versus Jin Alistar. Anything so far? Yeah. Well, which Let one? Me which see one do you want? The... That one. The... Samira? Jin? Here versus Lucian Nami. Yeah, that, that one. That one. Okay, okay, cool. Okay. Where's the game? Okay. All right. You know, the okay, usual, if you have any questions, just stop, stop me. And now we're, we're going to try to look at the small things, the details they do, as ADC and support. Um, okay, why is this? Yeah, okay, good. Removed, so we go on jam. We put the pen here. Okay. Okay, okay first. first. Now, Assuming, or let's assume, this is the loading screen. In loading screen, you need to read what's going on. You need to read the matchup you have and the matchup they have. In terms of what? Camps, runes, sun spells. Have misfortune with ghost and rune, like first strike. I'm a Janna with heal and summon area. Okay? They have a Lucian with Ignite, which counters the heal. What should I do when they have heal and I have Ignite? What's the play? I heal early. I heal at 70 or 80% HP. So it doesn't get ignited. Uh, so I, because you know, Ignite removes heal, right? Yes. So yeah. And what if I have Ignite and they have heal? I ignite early. So that's how I counter it. Heal, it's like... He, he wants, wants to ignite, ignite me early. I, yeah. yeah, so yeah, you, you see the idea. So it's just, you know, he, he wants, wants to ignite, ignite you early and you want to heal earlier. So you don't you lose your heal and yeah, and it goes vice versa. Anyways, um, so they have a first strike and they have heal and we have they have airy. So, you know, I read the matchup in terms of champions and how, how strong they are, runes and summer spells. So for example, everybody knows that Lucian Nami is really strong early on. Like, they're so much annoying and they're lame bodies, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, you need to read these things. And also, in terms of jungle, some junglers, they spam gank, some junglers, they don't gank, and so on. So, yeah. Let's just watch. See? And this is also an important thing. She did not start any ability. Ideally, you don't want to stand here. The, you, you should do something called blocking. If you look at enemy team, they're blocking. See? Malphite here, Zinza here, Porky here, Nami here, Lucian here. So they're basically they're basically covering all spots. So you should be, for example, as a Janna, you cover here. If not here, you could cover somewhere here. Not, uh, wait, what caused the bullet? What do you mean? Cork is wrong place. Ah, um, that's a bit good damage. Why? I guess I'll cover. Oh my god, yeah, the cork is sure. I mean, I don't care about mid lanes, they suck. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but that's a bit good damage. I'll invade the widget in mid lane. Yeah, so basically, Victor is doing this correct. He needs to be like further up, like, uh, like in front. But yeah, as Jana, you want to be here, or you want to be, as we said, like here at the edge of this. Why? Because, you know. When you are in the like the front of the bush, you don't have a reaction time. And on the opposite side, you want to be here or here or here, and we sh as we should, as we should, yeah. Here it's fine because you can see them coming. And I was thinking about this bush. I don't think it's like right to stand here. I'm not sure. Panda. Hello. Ah, go leh no al afdal. Inna lochen ykun asan filan hag al cheese isudda. Lo fil cheese yane. U nami itser mahalla korke itser mahal nami. No, I'm not going to talk about it. It's better if uh, Lucian anticipates a leash. Uh, a cheese, sorry. You, you know what cheesing is? Yes. So yeah, in bot lane, cheeses happen a lot. And here in this lane, for example, they could go for... They sit here, for example. They go for Q, auto Q, and they, they run. 
so they get HP advantage just by cheating. So Lucian could cover like could cover bot lane as well, and Nami could be in his spot, and like uh, Corky could be in Nami's spot, and yeah. So let's see how it goes. And again, just this is, uh, just to remind you, you should never use uh, use any ability unless like you you need it because if anything happens, you might need any other ability. All right. Okay. Here, one more joke about doing the funny hop. Okay. This is also something to mention. If you see like how ADC and support they are, they are there is like somewhat of a invisible line between ADC and supports. It's like this. You're aligned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's important to understand this position. Why do you think Janna walked like that? She walked in her. Just watch it again. Yeah. Look. I think she's looking for the opportunity to hit him in his W. Yep. She, she's the pressuring him with her W. Because if he goes for auto W, it's stronger than his poke. Her poke is actually strong, look. She won the trade, but since Nami heals, but you know, this is good because you are forcing Nami to waste her mana. Which which leads up to you winning later on. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> فتفتح الاي عشان تقدر تفوق ودمها ينقص اقل وهي مرات بتستخدم من هي عشان تهيل البوك البوك التنامي بالشيل اوكي okay. انه اثنينهم مواجه ريج معالي سو بليد سينج ان ذس كيس وين يو بلينج فيرسس سم بوك يو مايت وونت تو يوز يور اي سو يو كان بوك لايك تريد وذ اوتوز ذن يو بوب اوف ذا بوب اون لايك يوز يور اي سو ات بلوكس ذير بوك ذا ميك سنس سو يو كان تريد وذ شي جست لايك ميليو هي شيلز هيم سيلف هي ووكس اب اند ذن هي اوتوز ذن جو باك so you could do that as well. You see, Janna is hitting the minions, so they can get the level 2. And as I told you earlier, once you get these three minions of the next wave, of the second wave, you get level 2. Boom, level 2. Shields, early. Okay. Alright. Okay. Why do you think we worded this bush? Which bush? The middle one. Oh, because we we don't want the Nami pokers. Yeah, we don't want ring. Nami to pressure us to be here. We want to start taking yeah. space, so we word this bush. It forces Nami to stay to to stay away. And also, if I want to insist on controlling the bush, what do I get? I get sweeper. If I play Nautilus, for example, I would go, I would go sweeper and remove this bush. This, uh, what do I mean? Oh, what do I say? The word. So I can control it more. Because you don't have vision and I can stay there. And look, they're respecting. And this is why, what I mean by chess. If Lucian is moving forward, they're moving backward. If Lucian is moving backward, they're moving forward. So there is like, a, 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 like an extra step of everything. They read their, their opponent and what the opponent wants to do and they react to it. Especially in this lane since he has the agency. Lucian wants to win this lane. If he doesn't win, it's bad for him. They can just escape. So understanding the matchup also like really is important. I get that blood. No, just me. And uh, there's like a line. You you sit, like you sit here. You sit here. She's here. Okay, cool. Look, Blade is saying. Look at how the like, Lucian and Nami are positioning compared to how Jana and Misfortune are positioning. Lucian is. Oh, like controlling top side, Nami is controlling both side, while both of these are stuck on each other. So Janna could just position somewhere here, 
so they could have a control more area of the land instead of just you know sitting on each other I see wow Also, when they attack, it will be easier as well for Lucian Nami and harder for Emeth Jana. Yeah, he's right. So, look. The thing here is, if they look for a fight, what's gonna happen here? Lucian and Nami are gonna be able to hit ja Misfortune while Jana is useless. Use AFK. It's a 1v2 at this point. Just because of the position. Uh, am I right, Will? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I understand it perfectly. Come on. But, but if Jana is here, here, for example, it's a 2v2. Like these two, there's these two. Or it could be different, it could be like this. It's a, you know, it's a 2v1 now, at this position. Yeah. So now Jana is AFK. She's just going for shields, which is fine. Like in some lanes, the ADC just won't survive. For example, if I'm playing versus Draven, I don't want to trade, I don't want to take CS, I just want to live. Living is winning, some, some, in some ways. And this applies to uh, this guy's with Lucian. And sometimes versus Samira, you don't want to fight, you just want to survive. So yeah, it all goes back to understanding the matchup. And if you, you might ask, how do I understand the matchup? You watch how the matchup goes from higher elos and what are the small things they do. For example, if I play versus, let's say, Ziggs, I want to chase him level 1, so I, I don't let him push. So any champion wants to push, I will go for a cheese and try to not let them push at me. So yeah, I want to look for stuff. I want to do stuff. Alright. Okay. In my opinion, this this is not a good word if they had a sweeper. If the enemy had a sweeper here, this is a bad word. But since they don't have Why? a sweeper... Because, look, Lucian and Nami are pushing forward, okay? Assuming Nami has a sweeper here. So since they're pushing, they can just remove the vision. So if once they push, they can just remove the vision and boom, you're screwed. Holy damage. Yeah. See? The heal was late. So it was not as effective as it was supposed to be. Usually you want to be healed. Yeah, that's what it was now. Good not to bleed. Okay, look. I'm not going to get a surge lock in general. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm is like in no cup wise as long as your Q level 5. So your abilities at basic levels are really strong. Okay, copy. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So again, this is another concept we talked about. These guys have the jungler coming. So Lucia understands this really well. So he goes for a heavy trade. So if the jungler comes, he can just die. But the enemy jungler, I mean, or the, the blue side jungler also understands oh, this. Yeah, our jungler, exactly. Thank you. And he understands this. So he sees the state. So he immediately comes to cover. This is a pretty high elo gameplay. So that's why they know what's going on. So Zinzo is good and Kha'Zix is good. And look, the bot lane is also good. Once they see that yeah. <laughs> what's happening, they just leave. They're not like dying in their turret and flaming. No, I'm, I'm going to give minions. Like it doesn't matter. I just want to live. 
it's fine to give. Look, and the Kha'Zix, he stays here, and if anything happens, nothing happens, I recall. Wow. <laughs> yep. Like, League of Legends at, like, the high, the high level, it's just logic and understanding. Okay, so, yeah, another thing. Mm -hmm. Kha'Zix left, I come again. That's the Zinza. Zinza responds. Who respond? Response, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. They have a cannon. It's always good to dive on a cannon. Alright. This is a tough lane, by the way. Illusion Army. It's so hard. This is really nice. I love it when my support goes to cancer recalls because it screws up all the plans they have. Now this guy is late for this. Now if Kha'Zix sees this, like it's cancelled, he can go and steal the Krux. Just because of Janek you. This is so broken. Look, he's gonna steal two camps probably. And this guy is now angry because he knows this, he's gonna lose this. So he goes mid lane. Now the problem is with the mid laner. If he dies, he's in thing. Like he, they're pinging him. Uh, back off. Okay, now he he lives, which is good. Let's go back to bot lane. All right, let's see where Jana goes now. Where do you think she's going? Mid lane. Exactly. It doesn't matter if there is an objective or not, now there is a grubs, but the idea is to at least hover. But since there are, there are grubs, you want to move. He, look, she's hovering. It doesn't matter to do, if you want to do anything or not. Just hover. Yeah. And now we understand this as well. Alright. Let me just click on this. Yeah, now we're in thing. Oh. All right. Look, even the recall is for an idea. She didn't recall here, she recalled here. So if anything happens to Victor, she can cancel and join. Like these small things that matter the most. And the only reason Janna could stay that long is because Nami moved there as well. So again, you see they're stacking on each other because the lane is hard to play, by the way. It's not because they're bad, it's because the lane is hard. It's it's really pressure, like, you're really pressured versus Lucian Nami. Because any bad step, yeah. you just die. Like, she lost half her HP just for existing. شوف بالله بعرف تستخدم الهي لحين يكون بيرفكت لانه عندك نايت. يا yeah. وغير all... اصلا في هالليل لازم اكزوست ما اشي العب اون بلون اكزوست. ايه اي ريلي جود نوت اوكي. So he uh, Blade is talking about summoner spells. Let me just explain this really quick. Heal is the thing uh, one of the most broken summoner spells in 2v2 because it heals two players plus movement speed and it's countered by what by ignite. You counter it by ignite. Right? Mm -hmm. This is not the sign. Yeah, no, this is the sign. Okay. And then we go to something else. When do we need exhaust? When playing versus burst. Lucian Nami burst? Yes, I go exhaust. 
Samira, Burst, yes, I go Exhaust, Tristana, Draven, Kaisa, uh, sometimes Twitch with PDA, yeah, I go Exhaust. You see? So there are patterns you should follow. And just, just, just for your information, um, Ghost outscales every other summoner spell. So Ghost basically outscales everything. Why? Because uh, each level, it gives more movement speed. It goes from 24 to 48% movement speed. So at max level, it gives you this much movement speed. And it's so broken on AD carries. The Ghost. Yeah. And the Blade says I here... I didn't know about that. Now you know. Uh, and Blade says mm -hmm. about the heal, you could use it right now for two reasons. Reason number one is because uh, it goes on cooldown, so it's going to come back quicker. And reason number two is if they go in with Ignite, it's going to be useless. And you're not, you're not going to have time to react. I have a question about summoners. Go ahead. Spells. And for example, if my if my ADC goes with the Ghost, mm -hmm. do I have to go with Heal or I can go with Ignite? It depends. So for example, as we said, if you're playing against high burst, like Draven, Lucian, mm -hmm. Samira, you need to go exhaust. If your ADC doesn't go exhaust, I mean. Assuming the ADC doesn't go exhaust. If you're playing versus high heal, like something like Soraka, Nami, with like Nami with Ash or Soraka with Ash, and you want to kill in lane, you go ignite. Alright? Okay. And if you're if you're in lane, like a normal lane, Let's say Janna, Caitlyn versus Israel. I don't know. Let's say Thresh. You you might want to go heal. Heal is good. Okay. Okay. All right. I see. So Nami here, for example. Let's look at Nami. Where is Nami? After them pushing. They want to remove the vision from here. This is not allowed. You push the wave, you take over vision. Because they can't fight over it. Mm -hmm. Now let's look on the bigger scale. And also for your information, the quickest way to clear a wave is to start with the casters. You clear the casters, then you clear the front line, and then it goes under till it faster. Alright, so look, first, push the wave, second, go dragon. It's all about pushing waves, and that's the enemy thing, yeah, but it's a good example to take. Now Janna and Misfortune are late for the dragon, see, the moment they move, it's already done. Maybe Janna steals, yeah, empty. Alright, look, now that we cleared the wave, now we're hovering. This is what I mean by hovering, look, she's looking for anything that could happen, nothing happened, I go back. I don't think Misfortune should have moved, but Janna would definitely should have moved. And also as a, like, as a note versus Lucian, look. <clears throat> when he when Lucian is like this, that means like, depends on the minions. So he can Q like this. So you go up, for example. If he is like down, you go down. Uh, sorry, if he's here, you go here. If he's here, you go here. Something like this. So you avoid his Q. So look at how key yeah. his key works, for example, let's see. And the same thing goes to Senna as well. Look, here's a Q. Since he was like here, let's say he was here, and we go here. So you avoid it, or up a little bit. So it depends on where, where he's standing. Like just another side note, for skill shots, it's always good to aim at their legs. It's good to what? Aim at the model or the champion leg. I like learned about this recently. Like if you have a skill shot, any type of skill shot, you want to land abilities uh -huh. at the leg. Because the design they made that whenever you aim at the leg, it doesn't miss. But if you aim like at the champion itself, it could miss. Even though you're not missing. So if you if you don't if you want to not miss any skill shot, you just land like try to hit the leg. And try to predict. Predict at the leg. That's what I mean. 
It's just, uh, you know, uh, uh, some information. And yeah, this is tough. See, again, we're excited. We're just gonna give everything. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah. This is annoying, but that's how it's played. Now, it's, at least we don't die. We're respecting the weak side. It's okay. See, they didn't die even once. Some lanes surviving is winning. And they're gonna end up winning this game, by the way. It looks bad, but they're doing their job not to die. Now Jana is doing something. She is giving Misfortune solo XP. Instead of standing here, taking XP, she's leaving, clearing the vision. Since they recalled, we have some time. And now Misfortune is having solo XP. She can be ahead in XP. Am I right, Blade? Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, she stole it. <laughs> okay, Jana! <laughs> she's him! <laughs> Alright. Okay. Again, same idea. Miss Fortune clears the waves, then hover. Same goes for Jana. Okay. See, something happened, we're already here. The backup is prepared. This is called uh, proactive gameplay. You are ready for anything happens before it happens. Now there is a problem. Then something happened here. That means Miss Fortune is weak sided. She doesn't have any backup with her. She has, she has to give up the lead. Now this is bad. Wait, and this? Wow. Yeah, nice try. Look, this is like the same exact thing I showed you in my Twitch game, right? I mm -hmm. tried to do something in the turret and I died. Here, Misfortune should have just left. But it's okay, since Jana was covering the play here. Jana was correct, but the Misfortune, like, she thought she could something, she could do something she couldn't. But it's okay. We end up doing, like, something right Because we, one for one, Okay. And mother, my name is Malfoy. <laughs> Just go away. <laughs> oh. Yeah, boom, you're done. Alright. We're dead. Let's see. Yeah, in regards of the itemization, you might ask, like, how do you know the items and stuff? I use a website called deeplot.gg, and here you just type the, na the name of the champion, for example, Janna, and then you go to the OCPs. And here you can find all the one-trick ponies of Janna and what they play, ruins, items, and stuff, according to what scenarios. For example, let's go on this guy, anything. You see, you can check for all the stuff, the runes, matchups, and so on, so you can copy anything you want. It's easier to copy stuff. It's harder to come up with things. So oh, where's you? Yeah. Lola, Lola. Okay, so you're just, just okay. Your game twice. Yeah. Hello. بالله بعد عن إنه مثلاً أدش الجيم. Okay. Ah, uh, HF مثلاً match up. قروا يسوون swap من من هالدقيقة أصفوا يسوون swap لأن البوتلين ما قروا قتلون الفيكتور أكيد. انه هو اهد عليهم وهم جايين بيهايد فقروا يسكنوا في الميد لين وجانا تتحرك على راحة حاجة بس هذا جول بس بقلع ما عليه اوكي لك in some lanes in some lanes when you lose so hard and your mid laner can handle the bot lane it's better to swap early like for example now when your turret is down you could just swap uh, so Aatrox uh, not Aatrox the Victor could, could go there but yeah now the laning phase ended I don't think I'm gonna see Janna go bot lane anytime soon. So see, the, we secure mid push, now we're putting wards. She's moving top, Nami's here. Yeah, this is, this is so, like, reckless. I think she should have warded this one before she moved. Because if, if anyone else with Nami there, she dies. If we were to look at the spots of the wards, he warded here, like at the edge, and here. Let's see what else he's gonna do with the wards. Mm -hmm. Is this our ward as well? Mm, 
I don't know, I'm not sure. Yep, I want the Okay. okay, so we word it here, at this edge, here, here. So you can see what's happening in the map. Alright. And usually, as I said earlier, whenever your like words finish, you want to recall and re like reset your words. Because your words are like a strong thing. They're not just vision, they're more than that. They also give money if they destroy it to your opponent. So if you want to win trade, if you want the opponent to win, just get words, let them destroy it. It's too much gold. Where's the channel? Alright. What the fuck? No! <laughs> <laughs> this is suicide. Anyways. Uh, regarding like the blast cone, there's a like a nice interaction you can do. Let's say that enemy team is going to the blast cone and they want to like jump with it. You can put a word on uh -huh. top of it and it denies them from jumping. Because they can't auto it, they're gonna auto the word. And the same goes to Thresh Lantern. Okay? Okay. Do you get it? Or we were talking wrong way? No, repeat again, please. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is an, in like, an interaction you could do when your opponents want to use the blast cone. You could put a word. If you put a word on top of it, they cannot auto the blast cone. They're gonna auto the word, so they can't escape. And same goes to Thresh Lantern. You you put a word on the Thresh Lantern, so they can't use it to escape. Oh, wow. And also there's an interesting thing as well. If you're fighting with an ADC, okay, you know attack move. You know what attack move is? Attack move? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So AD carries use attack move, right? Mm hmm So in a, in a 2v2, it's good to randomly drop a word. You drop a word. Why? Because when AD... Your in internet is stopped for a little bit. What do you say? You're, you're stopped uh, talking for a little bit. Ah, oh, okay. Let me, let me... Okay, is the mic... Is it now? Is, is it now better? Yes. Okay. In a 2v2, you want to drop a word because when you drop a word, wait, let me see. Should I start here? Uh, come on. Or stop. Okay. Let's say that you're in 2v2, okay? You, when you drop a word, since the ADC is using attack move, okay? The ADC is using mm -hmm. attack move. The attack move is going to target the word. And the enemy ADC is going to lose some autos because he hit the ward instead of hitting you or your ADC. Okay, I see. So, like, you could use it here on this or in the fight or against Thresh. It's important to have it in mind. Okay. Uh, Banda. Hello. بالله هالأشياء ما تنفع تصير اللعب ما تجيب أيتم الواردات قبل أيتم الواردات الواردات هذا أهم من هالفايت. Yeah. But I saw one fight actually. These things. You should not do them unless you have the words item because it's uh, it gives you free words. Otherwise, it's not good because the vision is more important than stopping Thresh from you know taking lantern or using it here or in a team fight or in a fight. Maybe in a fight you should use it if it's like a close fight. All right. Let me turn off the volume because it's giving me headache. All right. Here is Jana. So it's it feels like supports are always fighting over vision. Jana is removing and putting. Nam is removing and putting. And also as an as a note, whenever you have a pink word, you want to put it in the pit. Like always, put your pink word in the pit. It's always good. What it's, what do you mean by the pit? The pit is the dragon pit. The Burn pit. The, the place oh, of the I objective. See. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This is nice. Look at the places they're wording. See? Like they're wording here, okay. like the enemy team, here, here. So they have somewhat of a triangle that gives them vision if, I, if they come from anywhere.
and jamma as well has a smaller triangle so words usually go in triangles or squares like this if you like like geometry right See, she is not doing anything because we did not push the wave yet. Once the wave is pushed, we have time to do stuff. Look, next wave is here. It's going to take 30 seconds to reach here. Or not 30, 25 seconds. Because it's mid lane. So look, after pushing, we can do stuff. Since we looked for a fight, next wave has already arrived. We push it, we do stuff. She managed, you might say like, yeah, but we did not push the wave here. Yeah, because they recalled in front of us. So now we can do stuff without pushing. That's like a something else. Oh. Look, we pushed the wave. We could look, look for anything. Maybe recall, maybe hover, bot lane, look. We're hovering. Wave, hover. Drop a word really quick. It goes back mid lane for the wave. Another word. Because, you know, once they take this turret, we need to ward this area. This area is going to be open. Anyways, I think this is enough of this review. Like, we covered the introduction and we watched some gameplay. Do you have any questions so far? Not right now, but I'm pretty sure that if I rewatch the video, I will have a lot of questions. Good, good, good. Yeah. So basically, um, I recommend you to like apply the things we like learned here and play some games, maybe for a week or two, and then you can come back so we can like watch your games and stuff. I don't mind. Yeah. Like, you, we can go, I have more sessions if you, want, if you want. I mean, I don't mind at all. And I do this for fun. Anyway, let me show you like my server. Um, so here we like answer any questions regarding like ADC support and stuff. We share our clips here, the achievements. If someone like hit high rank, like you know this guy hit master, this guy hit plat and stuff. You know here are my social media. If you can follow, I sometimes stream, sometimes you know TikTok, YouTube and stuff, memes. Looking for duo, but this one is inactive that much. Food stuff, okay, anything here? Yeah, I made this. Anyways, what? Um, what it looks it? delicious. Yeah, it looks delicious. Ah, thank you, thank you. It's a tart. A blade did not like it. Let's see. Huh? And you know this one. Resources are here. Like you can find like channels that you know they have ADC support stuff. Like we're mainly focused on ADC, but we do support as well. So they're connected. The recordings are here and if you can drop a review of the session now or later anytime it's fine and yeah that's pretty much it all right thank you so much fun yeah you're most welcome yeah all good oh good thank you thank you so much i learned a lot okay i'm glad you learned a lot and hope to see you soon yalla lola have a good one bye thank you yalla bye bye